r slash no sleep posted by you slash eek peak something was wrong with my catholic school teacher my mother and father were always extremely religious they met when at their local church they got married within six months of meeting seems way too fast in my opinion but what do i know i came along about five years into their marriage if i think back my very first memory was my mother reading me the bible only at night like a bedtime story once it would end she would start over by the time i was in second grade i almost knew the bible by heart we also went to church twice every week when it was time to put me in school my mother deemed public school to be too brainwashing it might taint my faith therefore i was put into a strict high class catholic school growing up i did really well in school i did everything my parents wanted me to the summer i turned 18 I promised myself that once I'd finished this last year of school, I would move away to start my own life. I believe you should be able to freely believe what you want to believe. It's safe to say I didn't have that luxury. As hard as my parents tried, I never did fully conform to Catholicism. We didn't have different teachers for different subjects. Every year, we were assigned one teacher for everything, which was always a nun. It had been that way all of my life. I didn't expect anything else when I walked in the first day of my senior year. I never was the type to get to class early. I had perfect attendance, I just walked slow. Every year you could expect me to tally up at least 15 late checks. Everyone knows going to school is a drag. Surprisingly, the first day of my senior year, I was fully alert and making good time on my way to class. I couldn't wait to start the beginning of the end of this nightmare. This was a K-12 school, so I never even had the chance to see a different building. It wrapped around like an unfinished rectangle. One end was kindergartners, the other end was seniors. Throughout the middle was every other grade. It wrapped around in order, so every year I just moved right on down the hallway. I remember thinking it was crazy that my entire life had been me just making my way around a broken rectangle. I walked through the front doors and hung a right. From the middle of the school to one of the ends, it took about 7 to 10 minutes. 20 minutes if you went from end to end. It was a ridiculously large school. At least it seemed that way. With my backpack hanging on one shoulder causing a slight lean when I walked, I thought about what my teacher would be like. Not that they differed too much in personality. They were all strict. The entire school was strict. We couldn't even have wrinkles on our uniforms. I was one of the last people to walk in, like usual. I made sure I wasn't late though. I remember damn near dropping my backpack when I walked in. There was no nun, and everyone was silent. At the front of the room stood a priest. His back was turned to the class as he was wrote his name on the chalkboard. He stopped writing when I walked in. Pick a seat. His voice was deep. I hurried my way to one of the remaining open seats. I remember thinking he must have had a wicked sense of hearing because he didn't even turn around when I arrived. It was like he just knew. Everyone's eyes were fixated on the priest. It was eerie. Usually, the only time we saw a priest was when we got in trouble or when we would go to church. I remember thinking everyone must have been just as confused as I was, but you did not question a priest. It was a common rule in our school, and everyone knew it wasn't worth the repercussions. He finished writing on the board and turned around. His eyes glanced over the room. His posture was impeccable. It was almost creepy. He held his hands in front of him. Everyone was waiting for him to say something. Personally, I was waiting for him to tell us he was filling in for a nun. No one expected to hear what he had to say. I know I didn't. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, assuming you all can read, my name is on the board. I understand it may be hard to pronounce, so you can all just refer to me simply as father. I will be teaching your class until the end of the year. He was smiling, but his voice was stern. I remember subconsciously fixing my posture. A priest is our teacher? Seriously? How am I supposed to get through an entire year being scared to blink wrong? My thoughts were racing. I knew priests were supposed to be forgiving, but in my experience it never really felt like they were. I reassured myself it was only for one more school year, and then I never had to see to this place ever again. The first half of the school year was extremely boring. Nothing exciting ever happened because, well, everyone was too scared to make a mistake. I don't think a single person in my class had below a B average. Even the kids that were notorious for doing badly were doing well. I can assure you that it wasn't by choice, and absolutely no one was having fun. The day we returned to school after winter break, three kids were absent. I remember immediately thinking this was odd, as no one in my class had missed a single day of school yet. Three in one day seemed really weird. 
After everyone who was there was seated, the priest glanced over the classroom like he did every morning. Seems as though we're short on students today. I heard the flu is terrible this year. He said it almost as if he were telling a joke. Nobody laughed. Now, there were 35 people in my class. You can imagine how I felt by the end of March when there were only 21 people left. Every week, the priest had one or two students stay after class. Not at once. He would stop one student one day and maybe another one the next. The days changed, but students being told to stay after class was consistent. During the first week of April, he called my name. I knew exactly what he was about to say. I held my breath. See me after class. I have something I would like to discuss. His voice was as stern as usual. I said okay, but I was scared. Every student he had called to see him after class had gotten sick or moved to another class. I don't know about anyone else, but I sure as hell never saw any of those students again. After everyone had left, I made my way to his desk at the center of the room. Sit. He sighed demandingly, but nicely. Do you know why I asked you to stay after class? No, before you answer, I'm sure you don't. It seems to me that you have wavering faith. Do you not believe? Do you wake up every day and come to a building you think is based on lies? I can tell when a student has lost their way, but I feel as though you never found it. Have you been blindly following our Lord in the dark? He was smiling. I couldn't tell if he was serious. I stuttered, I am sorry, Father. I do believe. I was lying and somehow he knew it. I couldn't break eye contact. Really? Is that so? I somehow believe you to be less than truthful with me. However, it doesn't quite matter. You see, I don't really believe either. He was still smiling. Before I even had a chance to respond, he started rapidly speaking in tongues. He was pulling his fingers back so hard that I could hear the snap as he broke each one. His once dark brown eyes were a near iridescent blue. His nose started to bleed from both nostrils. I noticed he would sometimes switch to speaking in Latin. It was terrifying. I knew a little bit of Latin growing up, but it wasn't until he broke his eighth finger that I could made out what he was saying. He was performing a sacrificial ritual. I never believed in demons or possession. I never believed in anything that couldn't be proven. If this wasn't proof of something though, I didn't know what else could be. I wasn't waiting for the tenth finger to snap. I didn't know what would happen to me, but I knew it wasn't good. My fight or flight responses kicked in, and I booked it out of there as fast as I could. I ran out of the emergency exit door. I didn't even wait to catch my breath. I ran until I could see my house in the distance. My legs were on fire. I was scared about my mind. I remember my mother calling out to me as I burst through the door. I ignored her and ran straight up to my room. I looked up every word I could remember. It didn't take long to find what I was looking for. I came upon an article that read as follows. This demonic entity is known to be one of the worst to be documented by the Catholic Church. This demon is known to possess those most unlikely to remain undetected by an exorcist. This demon feeds off of those who lack faith. The ritual is meant to confuse victims into a hypnotic state, making them less likely to flee. After this demon has successfully fed from 15 victims, it can fully take over the host. These demons cannot enter holy ground unless the host is a religious figure. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't just seen it for my own two eyes. I decided to pack my things and go stay with my aunt who lived a few hours away. I didn't need my parents' permission anymore, and how was I supposed to explain that the reason I was running was because I thought my teacher was a demon. My teacher who was also a priest. I was scared. I just wanted out. My parents decided if I wanted to live a religious free lifestyle, I could live it on my own. So, I finished high school online and went on to go to a community college as far away as I could. I never found out what happened to that priest, and I don't know if I ever want to. I've lived half of my life not caring about religion. I pushed what happened into the back of my brain. I didn't go to therapy, and I never told anyone what happened. Maybe it's a coping mechanism. Maybe I'm scared he can still find me. Maybe I'm still worried that no one will believe me. I don't know. What I do know though, is that even if I were to convert back to Catholicism, how could I ever trust another priest again?